I use the zone system when I'm exposing my negatives today. And many years ago, when I was teaching workshops, somebody referred to me as Mr. Zone. So that's my license plate, and I've had it for decades. My earliest experiences in the dark room were magic, and the challenges and the alchemy that still exists in that room is magic today. Watching the print come up under the dim glow of safe lights is an experience that few people will forget once they see it happen. I think everybody on earth should see it happen once. A good day in the dark room is generally a great day. When you close the door, you turn off the white lights, you're isolated from the rest of the world. It's a sanctuary. My dark room has all the tools right where I need them. They probably wouldn't work for anyone else. I think that the time goes more quickly. I'm in a time warp in the dark room. Two minutes in the print developer is a lot faster for me than a few seconds watching an icon of a wristwatch spin on a computer monitor. The dark room is a unique experience in many ways. The wise thing is to wear protective gloves when you're handling the chemicals. But knowing what are in the typical black and white chemicals, they're no more toxic than what you have under your kitchen sink. And I love the fact that I touch the print in the developer. I like feeling the alkalinity of the developer. I like feeling the surface of the silver gelatin emulsion. I like feeling that alkalinity change when it hits the acid stop bath. It's a truly hands-on experience. They're handcrafted prints. For me, the photographic print is a sensual, tactile experience. Every paper has a slightly different surface. It's like its fingerprint, its DNA. It feels different, it looks different when you examine it under close inspection. Most of the time we see prints framed. That's great, it protects the photographs. In my opinion, the best way to experience any photographic print is in your hands with some good light, sitting down with a fine glass of wine. Each photographic emulsion, each photographic paper has its own unique qualities. I tend to favor a smooth, air-dried, F-surface glossy paper. Not high gloss, but it, if it's air-dried, it gives it a luster, a sensuous, rich black that seems to go forever. This can be enhanced with selenium toning to create an illusion, and photography is all about illusion, but it creates an illusion of the third dimension. It's interesting how your photography evolves. I really feel that I grow from my photographs. I learn the most from the ones that don't work. They're no fun, they're painful, but you just have to endure those. And then when things do work, you're working hard, and you get lucky, you get something that you want. But sometimes it's unexpected. I made a photograph along the coast north of Santa Cruz a number of years ago, and I normally make two identical exposures, just in case something goes wrong, a scratch, dust, or something like that. I don't bracket, two identical exposures. I make this photograph of the ocean, no pre people. I don't normally photograph people. A body surfer comes in, turns around, I look up to make the backup negative, and I just press the one second exposure, and that's the one I printed. I never printed the image I first visualized, so I always try and react to the unexpected. As still photographers, I think we often look at our photographs as a series of disjointed experiences. For me, photography is much more cinematic. One photograph leads to the next. The day before Thanksgiving in 1974, I was in Yosemite Valley, and working later than I normally had, I encountered a landscape of a boulder, a fallen log in the water that had frost on it. It was very striking, very graphic, but it required a one-minute exposure. I'd never done anything like that in the landscape. I didn't think it would work, but I tried it. It did work, and it unlocked a whole new way of seeing for me. Over the years, I've made many long exposures. I usually start a little earlier than many photographers, before sunrise, and I definitely work later than a lot of photographers in the landscape. In 1978, I was working with an aspen grove on the east side of the Sierra Nevada. And long after the sun had set, probably 20 minutes, the aspen seemed to have an illumination as if from within. I made the negative. The long exposure, compensating for reciprocity departure, built the contrast in the negative. And when I printed it the first time in my small dark room, now in my folks' garage, that's when I really began to appreciate the magical qualities of what I call quiet light.
studying with Ansel Adams, working with Ansel Adams, using Ansel Adams' zone system, I'm very familiar with the term visualization. It's the foundation of the zone system. The idea to try and render what you see, what you feel when you're making photograph in the print. And it really revolutionized the way I exposed my film, the way I thought about the process. I wasn't thinking about what the negative would look like on the light box. And today I wouldn't be thinking about what the image would look like on my monitor. I'm going to make some decisions there, but the final destination is the print. So before I ever press the cable release, before the shutter is ever released, I'm thinking about what I want in that print. Then I'm going to try and take the necessary steps to reach that goal.